We Need Each Other is a podcast about the importance of human interaction. It provides reminders that we are not intended to live in isolation. Human beings need each other. The things about another that pisses you off and the things that take you over the moon are all opportunities to see through another's eyes, recognize their intrinsic value, and then look more deeply within ourselves to find the love that's always there. So I'm already having fun here with my guest oh, tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, Walter Barrett, I call him Wally. And you were introduced to, those of you who've been following the podcast were introduced to Wally. I always forget to look up what the month was, but it was several months ago when we did an episode on white privilege with three white people. And Wally was the actual male representative on that uh, panel. And I have him back today. Because Wally's had a, made a statement that we need to talk about. But let me tell you a little bit about Wally. And then I'm going to have him tell you a little bit about the things that he does also. But I know Wally because he and I met more than 15 years ago when our children were teenagers and I was facilitating a teen group in my home. And his daughter used to come. And Wally was one of those parents that was always present, always available, always there when asked to be there. He just supported his daughter no matter what she felt about it. He was there in support of her. And we just have become fast friends ever since then. And we've talked about racism a lot over the years. And one of the things that I would say many moons ago to Wally is, you understand the plight of black people better than most black people that I know. And the truth is, it seems like right now we're really just learning our history and learning, you know, in, in general as a people, what it, what's it, what it's all about, Alfie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, yes, Wally <laughs> has said to me that all white people are racist and I've said, Wally, but you're not racist. And Wally says, yes, I am because I'm white. And so I want Wally, if we can begin there, why do you believe that all white people are racist? Well, I mean, simply because we all live in white privilege every moment of our lives, every moment. And we can't walk away from that. We can't get away from the, our privilege. Mm -hmm. It is ingrained in our society. We're taught probably from before birth that we are better and they are mm -hmm. not. And no matter why, no matter what I have friends tell me, well, but I didn't hear that in my home. And I said, well, neither. No, I actually didn't hear that in my home. But it was all around me when I walked out mm. the front door or the back mm. door. It was there always, even in a town like where I grew up, which was just pure white. I didn't hear the words. There was nobody getting killed. There was nobody getting beat up or lynched or anything. But it was just, and even today, the place is still just internally racist, completely racist. So what does that look like in that place where no, you know, there's no police brutality happening, nobody's getting beat up, all of those things? What does that racism look like that you see? It's that's a good question that I haven't been asked before. That's mm -hmm. but it's it's based in what I said earlier that we are taught this. From the from the get go, I mean, if I were to sit down with people, if if I had known to sit down with people when I was in grade school, junior high school, high school, and say, "Wait a minute, let's take a look at this. This is what I've been taught about black people, about native people, about Latino, Mexican, Hispanic people. These are the things I've been taught about them. All this, you know." Um, more violent, rapist, um, all the things that our president has said. Mm. We're just taught that. They are less than us. And, and we're taught that even in historical classes where teachers aren't trying to teach that. 
but they're mm-hmm. teaching that here's what slavery did to black people. They weren't able to read or write or, and then they're saying, but that was only yesterday. I mean, they don't mm-hmm. say the, those two mm-hmm. sentences together, mm-hmm. but they say them. So that just happened yesterday. Well, the, what you, what you get is, oh, well, those people are, couldn't possibly be as smart as we are. You know, I I looked up several definitions of racist, and the one that I like the most (laughs) is a racist is someone who believes that their race makes them better, more Mm -hmm. intelligent, more moral, etc., than people of other races, and who does or says unfair or harmful things as a result. Oh, that's perfect. Where did... I don't don't even know. I'll get it it from you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And so if we use that definition and, you know, the, the definitions are, I just like that one in particular, but, you know, the definition of a racist is someone or something showing discrimination related to the idea that one race is better than another. The bottom line is a racist is, is someone who, well, I guess, whether consciously or unconsciously believes that their race, the white race is better than any other race. And, the, the idea of being a racist has to be aligned with having the economic power, the power to make change in this country. And that's why you, we don't use the term racist for other ethnicities, but only for white people, because they're the ones that are making all the rules. Yes. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. called a racist often enough when I'm having these conversations with white people. They do bring that up. They call me a racist. Mm. Which now makes because me, you're in because, because you're in alignment with people of color. Oh, because I'm saying that we're all racists. Well, you're like, they, yeah, that's what I just said. You're you're a racist. You're a racist. You're a racist toward white people. Anyway, um, I I just found I, I was looking at one. That I looked up a lot after we talked about the, the definitions. I found one that says encompassing economic, social, political, cultural mm-hmm. structures, yeah. actions, and beliefs that systematize and perpetuate an unequal distribution of privileges, resources, and power between whites and people of color. The unequal distribution benefits white folk and and disadvantages people of color overall and as a group. Anyway, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up before about the definition because people are always using the definition to argue with me. This is mm-hmm. what it says, and I'm not that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can, so then tell me, Wally, how, how is every white person that? Hmm. It's a good question. Um, because it it never goes deeper than that. Mm. I, I, I hope this is an answer. I'm, I'm not trying to deflect, but I, I, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I'm really struck by, is that I can never have a conversation about this, about that all white people are racist, that goes anywhere. It, it never goes anywhere. Mm. And we can never get down under it because of this, um, the privilege of being outraged that someone would call Mm. me a racist. Mm -hmm. Outraged. Mm -hmm. I've lost lifelong friends in the last 10 years. Lifelong friends. Because I have said this. (laughs) We're all racist. Are you saying I'm a racist? If you're white, you're a racist. And that's the end. The relationship and then they can't. Is over. They cannot. They can't explain to you their perspective as to why they are not racist, other than using the definition. Mm-hmm. And I, I never, I never lynched anybody. I never owned a slave. Mm-hmm. I never killed any Native American people. You know, I didn't do it, so I'm not. And mm-hmm. and we can never get under it. We can never really get down under it and just talk about it. I can't even get to, I mean, I was preparing for this and I found something, but I said, I can't even get 
or I, I have never had a white person say to me, you know, I'll think about that mm-hmm. and see it, what I think about that. And then we'll talk about it. Never. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or say, mm-hmm. oh, wow, maybe that's true. It never gets that far. It's always absolutely not. I am not a racist. And all white people are not racists. Okay, well, can we talk about it? That's just completely wrong. And then they call, start calling me all these names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a racist and I'm, you know, name after name. All kinds of things. Yeah, but especially mm-hmm. that one. That one really yeah. started, I realized when I was pushing people, they, then they call me a racist. Right. So I'm trying to wrap my head around it because I look at your dear sweetheart, you know, and go, well, Wally doesn't believe that he's better than other people because he's white, do you? No. But you are a member of the race that has the power in this country. And the privilege, the the complete, privilege. complete privilege. I have complete privilege. And so that means that you can put blinders on to what is happening with other ethnicities in this country. Yeah. Which makes you privileged. But why does that make you racist? I think privilege is racism. Mm. That Explain. Well, if... The first thing that pops in my mind, and it's not really the answer, but it's just what we were talking about earlier, that I can walk away from it. Right. What, I mean, to me, what more privilege can I have to deal with what I believe is the one thing that's killing my country? Mm. That's, for, first and foremost, that's what I believe. I believe that racism is killing my country. And as I started that belief many years ago, then to get down under it is where I finally came up with, oh, we're all racist. Each, mm. And not only as a group, but I think we must look at, at it as individuals, mm-hmm. that we are individuals who are racist. And I can just hear the voices in my head of all my mm-hmm. white friends or not friends or whatever with all their arguments instead of saying, oh, well, that's interesting. Let me think about it. Yeah. Right. Let, and mm-hmm. or people's backgrounds. I know people whose they say my grandfather was clan. Your grandfather mm-hmm. was clan. And he helped raise you. And you don't think right. that you're a racist? No seeds were dropped. No seeds were no, dropped. No, no, right. I didn't. Yeah. And, and, and also then, this just happened in the last week, that I really was getting that when I talk with black people and native people, the respect of, the, of, of your elders and of your history and of your elders' histories, no matter what the elders did that was bad, mm-hmm. they're still respected. And you know the bad things because you talk about them. Mm. That never happens mm. with white folk. It just mm. came to me. That's another part of being racist. We don't respect elders. And we don't respect mm. our own our own elders, our grandparents. We don't know the depths of their stories. It took me most of my life to realize that my father had said to me one time in one conversation that he was pretty sure that his father was a Klansman. And I said, mm. Pardon the, mm. me? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. He said, mm. and I said, because you were in the Badlands of the Dakotas. Where, I, mean, I didn't even know that there were, of course, there are clan everywhere. But, mm-hmm. and he said, well, 
they'd always have these big bonfires. You could see the mm-hmm. fire miles away, but you could see them because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And every time that, and I was told that, that those bonfires was, were a clan bonfire. And he said, I realized mm-hmm. that every time they had that bonfire, my father was not home. Mm. Oh yeah, that's the only thing I can find out in from my family. And he told me that when I was a young person, many, many, (laughs) many years ago. I can't get any information about that from my family. If I bring it up, they go fucking crazy. They say that never happened. There's no way. I said, my father was the oldest of all the siblings. And you're telling me that... Nobody, he, he made that up. Was he crazy? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So even mm-hmm. that. So there's a guilt thing attached to oh. the idea that one might be racist. Sure. Sure. But what, I mean, but okay. So oh, if you're racist, I'm tell you, here's what I, my experience over the last several weeks I, I received a, I posted this on social media. I received an impromptu phone call from a, a woman that I know in London who heard about the fact that I'm teaching classes and doing counseling with white people about deconstructing racism. She said, I'm so glad that you're doing these, uh, these sessions because it's so needed. She said, it's needed here. She said, it's needed in the world. She said, because they don't see their racism. No. They don't see the way that they judge. And that is the thing that concerns me because I, you know, I talk to white people all the time and I know they care, but they think that they're doing something beneficial when they're really not doing anything except saying that they care. And that I know is That's a good one. That's a good, that's a good. One. That's privilege because they get to walk away from it and ignore it. And I keep saying, do you not know that we're in crisis? We're in crisis here. It, you know, like you've seen the police brutality, but let's look at every system that exists in this country. Yes, absolutely. Racism is, is a, a, at the head of it. And, you know, the privilege, I see it as privilege. The privilege is that I can turn my head away from it and not see it and, and feel really bad about the thing I do look at and all. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel, I feel Yeah, horrible. I feel badly. That makes me. But I'm not going to feel bad enough to claim anything to be inside of me. No, I didn't bring. I don't know where it came from because I, I didn't have anything to do with it. My, it must be Trump's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Even though my grandfather was, was a Klansman, I didn't take any of that on. No. Yeah, it's like. Total denial. You know. Because of the work that I do, you know, I do coaching with people about things that they want to change in their lives. And what one of the things I realized many moons ago when I've been doing this for so many years now, but in the early days of doing this coaching, I realized that everybody was wounded from childhood and their whatever they're working on had something to do with some seed that was planted in childhood. So if yes. you are white and live in a racist world, our our world here in this country is steeped in racism. So there have to be those seeds in you Absolutely. that have taken some kind of fertile ground. So I'm I'm understanding more and more what you're saying here, Wally. And it's important that well, it's important to me because I really do want to believe that the people that say they care really want to do something to demonstrate that they care and not just talk about it. Well, talk about it seems to be it. But yeah, you just brought up something that I finally got recently. And because I, I've heard so much, and especially now being engrossed in, in the Native communities, and, and mm-hmm. hearing again about historical trauma, hear that mm-hmm. in the black communities, hear yes. that. Okay. Yes. Suddenly the other day it came to me, I went and I, I went up to talk to Claudia and said, I think this is historical trauma. I'm not sure if that's racist to use that term, but I think mm. that what's happening with white people is we have historical trauma mm-hmm. from the horrors that were committed Mm -hmm. in our name, by our family, by Mm -hmm. other white people. 
and we won't s- step up to it. We won't deal with it. We won't internalize it. Not to feel guilty, just to realize what has happened. And that's traumatic. I think that's yeah. traumatic. And I said, but but mm-hmm. the only thing I'm worried about is that if I'm using a term that I know and know well about black people and native people, is that white privilege for me to say that, to say that I have historical trauma? And, that's, and that was the only question I had about it because it, it seems to me very clear that it's historical trauma. Well, I would say my thought about it, Wally, is if the history of this country is based on what I refer to as barbarians who forced people to come here to work a land because they didn't know how to do it and they needed to make money off of it. So they did it on the backs of other people. It's historical trauma for everybody. Who could escape that trauma? That trauma is a part of the existence of all of us, wouldn't it be? That's that. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you've added to that because that kicks into the business that I've spent most of my life doing. And the mm-hmm. trauma that I was engaged with, but mm-hmm. therefore had to realize that I was getting it too. And it took decades to realize that I- What business was that? As a criminal defense investigator. So I was dealing mm. with mostly murder cases and and I was dealing with the victims. So I dealt with the victims and the killers who were my clients. Mm-hmm. So I had intimate mm-hmm. relationships with both and never realized that it was all going inside me. Mm. And I never got rid of it. <laughs> mm. I, I never mm. got rid of it. So what you just said rings a new bell for me is that yeah it's part of the world i live in and i know the hist- the history that you just said white people mm-hmm. came here and I, I i don't know who said this but i wrote it down white people are mm-hmm. born into not being human mm-hmm. as soon as what does that mean I, just what we're talking about, the, the kinds of horrors that we commit. If you look at Columbus in particular, he's a perfect example because he was also, first he helped start the African slave trade, and then he came over here and <laughs> commit genocide. And his, mm. so imagine being in his lineage. Well, anyway, imagine being him. Mm-hmm. He's not human. Mm-hmm. He's that's not human to do that. It's mm-hmm. just not. Mm-hmm. Human. Um, and then I wrote. It's certainly inhumane. Yeah, but what, then oh, I wrote yeah. wrote more mm-hmm. things down. We are truly taught to be demons, we white people, mm-hmm. because w- explain. Well, we can make excuses for all the things that we're just mm-hmm. talking about. Oh well, I didn't do that. I didn't have any slaves. I didn't murder any uh, any Native American people. I didn't rape any any uh, and pillage and and do all the horrors that I could <laughs> could talk about to others. I didn't do that. Mm, mm, mm. So, isn't that a demon? Well, yeah, that. Um... Yeah, I'm telling you, when I looked in Chauvin's eyes, the footage that we saw so many months ago of George Floyd. Yeah, Jesus. That was yes. de- completely demonic. Thank you. That, uh, that was a demon. There was nothing human Thank you. about that individual Thank you. there that we were looking at, which is why I think it was such a transformational moment for white people and so many people. I, I, I remember reading something that Ava DuVernay said that never before have we looked into the eye yes. of the uh, policeman and the victim, and we could look into both of their eyes, and that was why that moment was so transformational for everybody. We had not seen it in that way before, but what we were looking at was not a human being, as as, as one would think. It was it was inhumane, 
Absolutely. Well, and, it, it, and, and it, and it happens, it happens every day. It's happening over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and has been happening our entire every lives. day is, is every right. Day. And that's, I, I use that one and then people flip out and say, well, it's not every, okay, well, how about every other day? <laughs> How about three times a week? <laughs> I know it happens every day in America. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And and so what's the justification, even if it's okay, it's not every day. Okay, if it's once a week. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference? I mean, like, really, I, I, I don't even understand the thinking in their mind. I think part of that is deflecting, is saying it's mm-hmm. not me. And that's mm-hmm. – I that there are so many reasons, but I didn't think them through. There are so many reasons that I need to deal with this for myself in particular, Mm -hmm. individually. I am a racist. I don't need to feel guilty about that. Exactly. I don't don't want to do the guilt thing Mm -hmm. because I want to learn about it. And I want Mm -hmm. to keep working on it. I don't believe that I can ever get it, get rid of it. I think that my privilege gives me, if nothing else, privilege gives me racism. That's racism. Privilege equals racism mm. to me. But mm. Mm. For, for another thing that came along with doing the historical trauma, though, is I wrote down, we are not taught to love ourselves. Mm. Mm. I, I've heard my many of my black teachers, you've talked about this. Native teachers talk about loving ourselves because of what happened mm-hmm. to us. We have to love ourselves. Well, that's the that's the key right we don't there. Love ourselves. I can't. Mm. The things that you just talked about that that police officer. I have used those eyes. I've taken pictures of those eyes, and I've said to people, "Please look at his eyes." Mm-hmm. If you don't think that's evil. And if you don't think that's racism, that's pure, mm-hmm. unadulterated racism. It's just that part of what we've been talking about is that he doesn't even realize he's a racist. He's just he's no, just, that's he's just the there. It's just doing what he's doing. That's what's, what's so disheartening for me as a black person and and black people that I talk to, but I can't speak for our race. I can only speak for myself. Is is the things that you're saying here is. I am not, so I'm speaking right now on this podcast, any white person that's listening, I have no reason to want you to feel guilty. It's not about your guilt. It's about each of us has to recognize what is driving us and living inside of us that is non-beneficial to our ongoingness. and. Good. If there yeah. is if there is a belief inside of me as a black person that there's something limited simply because of the color of my skin, there's something that's not good enough, there's something that's not worthy, because you see, I don't look like it and talk like it, but that's inside of me because it's been planted there my entire life. By me. Okay. By, by exactly. me. By, exactly. <clears throat> so then we have to look at the other side of that coin. If I'm carrying that, and that's what I need to heal for me and my people, not carrying any guilt about it, but recognizing, well, there are parts of me that think, oh, I can't do that because, you know, I'm telling a story. When I was a little girl, I was at the bank with my mother. I don't know how old I was. I was very young. My older sister, she's five years older than me, and I were at the bank. And I'm standing at the teller window, and I'm turned around looking at all the people that work at the desk, Right. And I said, I want to work in a bank when I grow up. And my sister said, colored people don't work in banks. And something inside of me said, but I will. I didn't say it out loud. Do you know that my very first job out of college, I I didn't even put the two things together. I was, I lived in Memphis, racist Memphis, Tennessee. (laughs) And my first job out of college was I was in the management training program at Oh, gee, I didn't know that. that you know, wonderful. right? Yeah, and it's like, 
It, it, I didn't even realize it, but somehow that was a seed that had been oh, planted that's a in great me. Great story. So we have to look at the seeds that are planted inside of us. And what I have come to understand much better from listening to you and the people who have, the white people who have taken my class, it's been so beneficial for me because they helped me to understand how they really don't look at the concerns of people that are not white. That's how they were raised. They were raised and told that they weren't racist. They were told that they weren't privileged. They were told that they weren't any of those things and that we don't talk about it and we don't deal with it. And I've, I've, this is something that I've learned recently. Well, those are the things, not to make you feel guilty, but those are the things that we need you to look at. Those things that are planted there that said, I don't have to consider any other human being in the world except for the white people in my neighborhood, in my family, in the world that or I live just in. Me. And it's <laughs> nice. And it's nice that there's a black person that works with me. And oh, you know, she's different. She's nice. But you're not understanding my culture and getting to know who we are as a people. So it's not about you feeling guilty. It's about could you just like kind of get to know us? Because we know you, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it helps me to understand that's where the racism lives in that unwillingness to even look at, as you're explaining, to even consider, well, let me take a look at this. Yeah. It is beyond privilege. It's beyond privilege. It really is. Yeah, it, it, it's one thing you brought up, and I don't want to move off this, but, well, the... A, a man who I spent a lot of time with for many years. And, and and he's not the only one, but he is someone that's so white that he will say things that other white people won't say. Now, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean using any of the words or the slurs or anything. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. But what he finally said after listening to me, he played tennis for many years sit outside afterwards and talk. And he finally said, one thing I don't understand, Wally, why are you so interested in this? You're mm -hmm. not black. Why, mm -hmm. why, why are you put so much energy and time and, 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 and energy and anger and, and, mm -hmm. and heartache? Why do you put so much? I don't, I really don't understand. You're not black. You're white. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. and he said it that simply and i'm like yeah oh my and that says yeah. everything that says everything because why 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 would you not yeah <laughs> because because we're not because we're really actually not human and you don't need to you know i mean it's like why would you not why would i you know because I, you know, I have a thing because I'm 69 years old and there's so many labels out there and I just have a difficult time in remembering to use the labels. But if those labels are important to people, I want to understand the labels and how to use them. You know, there are um, television shows that I've watched because they help me to understand different types of people from the the person that I've grown up to be like, there's a show called pose that I absolutely love because it talks about the transgender community. And I have such a much greater understanding and compassion and love for that community that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't delved in yes. some kind of way to understand better. Why is it not important that all human beings go, like you say, go underneath, go deeper, go underneath so that we can understand what it is to be something different from what we are. There's no guilt being given in that. And I don't understand why there's a guilt taken Con because there's no one passing a guilt along constantly too. that. And because I hear that, I hear that. I've heard that recently. Who said that a native elder said, I don't hate white people. Do I no. have one? If you looked at it, would you, and and she said it to a white person. She said, "If mm -hmm. you had the history that I do, 
would you hate white people? I said, yes, mm-hmm. I would. Yes, mm-hmm. I would. You're a mm-hmm. better human being than mm-hmm. I am. I would fight. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. said, no. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I told the story on my webinar last week that you think about it, these very cruel people brought us over to till the soil, to plant the, the, the seeds, the plant, you know, to grow plants because we had knowledge, which meant that we knew what was poisonous. We knew how to kill you. And we were cooking your food and taking care of your babies. But we didn't do that. We could have annihilated those people easily if that was who we are. It's not who we are. But it's who? It's not who we are. But it's who white people are taught you are. I remember remember hearing this from childhood. And and I've heard again lately, joking Mm -hmm. now. Some older white guys say, mm-hmm. wait till the black people take over. Wait till it, it flips. And I think that's a it, fear. Oh, it, I think that's a It's an absolute fear. Because I, when, fear. It was said, when it was said when I was young, it was said out of fear. It said, we can't let mm-hmm. the black people take over because they will do to us what we have done to them. Mm-hmm. Well, one, mm-hmm. one thing I got from that after years of thinking about it, maybe decades, um. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you do know. Right. Oh, uh-huh. so you do yeah. know. Oh, my. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I connected that when I started dealing in the Just Us system with cops setting up black people on the street putting drugs in their pockets and getting them 10 year sentences. And anyway, it's the same thing. You do know what you're Mm -hmm. doing and somehow you make their three fifths of me. So it's not a big deal. Right. It's in our constitution. I mean, well, you, you, you said it. I mean, I love that story of you were going to work in a bank because it's put in our minds and in our hearts, whether we want it or not, whether we mm-hmm. want it or not. Would I, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember when, before Kristen was born thinking, don't do it to her, whatever it is. Not, and mm. I wasn't just thinking of race and racism, whatever yes, it is, yes, don't yes. do that to yes. her. Don't make her. And I, her whole life, I said it to her recently. I said, you remember, I've always told you, don't think the way I do. Don't yeah. do the kinds of things that I do. Don't say these things. We were talking about race. I said, mm-hmm. You'll, you're will you going to have to fight through heartache if you do. Mm-hmm. And I would just assume you not do that. And I've always told you, don't think the way I think. Don't believe the way I mm-hmm. think. Find mm-hmm. your own path. But... I didn't want to give her those things. I know I did. I, the, when I, well, you know, I, I just realized that everyone's wounded from childhood. Every, yes, I remember when my true. grandson who's now <laughs> 10 years old, when he was a baby, I was thinking, Oh my God, he's getting wounds and I don't even know what they are, but he's getting them because every human being has wounds because if we go yeah. in and look yeah. at those wounds, so here's the opportunity, white people. If you go in and look at those wounds, that's the place from which we grow. That's what it, they're there to help us to grow kinder with ourselves. So therefore we can pass that along to other people because there it is, Wally. I got it. I get it. You know, I get it. The racism is if I can't look deep within myself, then I can't love myself. If I can't look at myself, That's right. I can't That's right. love myself. And if I can't love myself, then I can't truly and love I can't, And, and I there can't you have it. And I can't get any closer to any of that. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean, you've said it. Mm-hmm. I don't need to add to it. Mm-hmm. You've said it. Mm-hmm. I can't get down under there. Yeah. But but we can. What do white people need to do, Wally? Give them some final <laughs> words. What do they need to do? Let's see. I want... 
You've been white for long time. a long time. Oh, yeah, long time. <laughs> I'm just looking. Here's what I'm looking at. I, it, as soon as you said that, I looked at my notes, and I got to say who it is, Professor Emeritus Tink- Tinker, and he is uh, mm. just just stopped is, is Emeritus now from the Iliff School of Theology. He's Native American, mm. but he's also a minister. <laughs> he's he's kept he's kept mm. his white mm. minister uh, ship so that he can talk mm-hmm. to Christ, white Christians. <laughs> but yes, yes, he yes. said, and he said that Russell Means used to say this: "Stir the mud from the bottom of the pot." Mm. Mm. And when I was preparing mm. for this. Stir the mud yeah. from the and I thought, of the oh my God! And I'm gonna next time I talk to him, I'm gonna say, that we're, we're, I'm preparing for this conversation. I'm talking with you, and that seemed so simple. If I really reach down under, mm-hmm. if 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 I'm if I've got soup, I, I did the several things when I when I was reading this a couple of weeks ago. I went, oh my God! If I have soup made and it's really good soup. And it's a big old pot out of open fire, and maybe the bottom has crud in it from mm-hmm. from the soup getting too burned at the bottom. But if I stir all, if I eat the soup the way it is, well, it tastes fine. If I stir it mm-hmm. down into the very bottom of the pot and get that stuff out of there, mm. then. Mm. And and it's just it, it started kicking into me. Oh my goodness, we don't. We won't. St- white people won't stir the pot. Even the anti-racist people who I deal with all the time, mm. and I, I'm not judging them because they're working at it. I mean, some of these people I'm thinking of, they're really working at it. They want to know, but there's still that fear. There's still that fear. Yeah. You you brought it up. I mean, I don't know what else racism is, but pure, unadulterated fear based on historical yeah, trauma. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> you know what? Another thing came to me with the stirring of the stirring yeah. from the bottom of the pot is the other another way to look at that is so you got this mm-hmm. great soup right that's got a lot of yummy goody stuff in it and when it sits in the pot oh, all that stuff settles to the bottom one. yes yes it all so settles to it. the bottom so you can take you can if you eat from the top of the soup like that might taste okay oh, it's pretty good but when oh, you stir it a, up then you get all the good stuff that's a good stuff. one then you're oh. like, oh wow, that's some good soup. <laughs> oh no, I like that. I like that mm-hmm. addition because we are afraid. We're either way. We're afraid mm-hmm. to. We're afraid either to stir way. it. I, I remember either way. Theo, I took uh, said something recently at a at a meeting. Yeah, yeah Theo was the best. He's mm-hmm. and it was. I told him this one time. Some years ago, I said, it's really been great watching you grow from Francesca's mm-hmm. living room to where you are now. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, mm-hmm. it's been great. And he smiled. He, he appreciated that. I had him on the podcast a few, a couple of months ago. A month He's ago amazing. Ago. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yes, he is. But amazing. he said, and he made it real simple. And Soul and he were, were, uh, I had this meeting and we were all sitting there, a lot of white people, not, not a lot because it was a small group, but mostly white people. And he said, come down here, come down to where we are, where we're drinking coffee, where we're eating, where we're living, where we, you know, where we live our lives. You, you want to really know? Come on down here. Right. And I've been saying that to right. white folks forever. And then you get to face then you get to face your biases and your your racism and realize, well, what was that all about? You know how they say the greatest fear is yeah, fear itself, yeah. or however that saying goes. 
if they could just look at it. I have a student. We have an area here called Lamert Park, which is like the African village here in Los Angeles, California. And he's a student from my class. And, you know, part of their growth work that I give them is spend time in black culture. And you can do that online. You don't even have to physically go anywhere, but he was like, let's, let's do it, you know? And so we went to Lamert Park and he saw this. I mean, it was, it was interesting. Um, what he saw because he saw black people being black people. He saw two men arguing and I stopped and I said, All right, does that make you fearful? Because he has some trauma about being uh, you know, attacked oh, okay. by black men. So has, he has a bias that black men are dangerous that he's working. Oh, good he's working him. on good it. For though. him. You know, he's good for him. Honestly, I adore him. But he said, <laughs> He said, I drove through a Trump rally on the way to get here. So nothing was more <laughs> frightening than that to no me. No shit. So, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. But I, I had to explain to him that di- I, I showed him the dynamic of what he was looking at because one man was arguing. The other one was trying to s- stop the other one and just like send him away. Like there wasn't a real right. argument going on here. And so I had him observe what was really going on. And he was cool. He wasn't fearful. And we had just a great little field trip in there. African no, village. Absolutely. <laughs> but, and luckily for me, and it's always been pure luck from the beginning, is I talk to these anti-racist people who spend time with black people learning in these seminars and meetings mm-hmm. and one or, you know, whether it's one or 10 black people, they spend time there. Mm-hmm. But I mm-hmm. started gently asking them years ago, have you ever had – no, I don't say it like that, though. I don't ask it as a question. I just mention it. <laughs> I said I, what I tell white or white people who start telling me about black people, I say, well, I don't find mm-hmm. that to be true, what you just said. Why don't you go to the black family that you have a long-time intimate relationship with? Why don't you go over to their house mm-hmm. and ask them what mm-hmm. they think of this? And I get the same look. Every mm-hmm. time, because they, because yeah, they, right. they don't have oh. any such relationship, <laughs> right. and luckily, exactly. that's how, what my learning curve was: is that I was taken mm-hmm. in. I mean, mm-hmm. taken in mm-hmm. by a large black family, and I spent mm-hmm. a lot of time with black. As an investigator, I spent a lot of time in black people's homes mm-hmm. and eating and, and mm-hmm. having intimate mm-hmm. relationships. And their sons going away to prison for life for killings. You know, anyway. Uh, but but yeah, just intimate relationships. I didn't know there was any other way to learn. It wasn't that I planned that. Right. And, and I. Yeah, there that's is no other seems. way to learn. There is no other. The reason that people of color know so much about white people is because we have to know we live in your world. So we have to, I mean, we, well, it's not true of every person of color. Sometimes we stay in our own environments and we really don't get to know that white world, you know, which is just the same thing on the other end. But in general, more because you run the show, we need to know more about your world. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to know about us. You don't have to know about our world. You don't have to consider anything about that person that's at work with you or that goes to school with you or that is in your apartment building or whatever. You don't need to know anything about their life. They're just that person over there. They're such a nice guy or a nice woman, but you don't really get to understand their culture. You don't really know anything about the Latinx community because there are those people over there. It's, you know, it's like, I, I say this all the time because, you know, I, I, I facilitate and I get, well, once again, when we're back out in the world. I facilitate retreats to other countries. And my whole thing is their cultural experiences, because the one thing I would hear about white people is that they would go like on a cruise and they would go to the port cities and say, oh, I've been to St. Lucia. But you didn't really go to St. Lucia. You went to the little shop right there where the ship stopped. You know, you didn't get to know anything about these people. And I don't travel as a tourist. I want to know the people in the country that I live in, that I, you know, that I travel to. And that's all I think that black people are asking. Can you just actually get to know us and let go of the stereotypes that you've been shown? Because if you don't do that, guess what? As Wally says, and I am in a complete agreement, you're a racist. Whether you want to call it that or not, that's what I see. And that's what you're demonstrating. That brings up something that I've thought of a lot and have have talk, spoken about and I've spoken a couple of times recently in 
situations in watching a movie on Native Americans. And I, I finally said it in a large group of mixed people. I said, I don't, I'm not from a culture. There may be an American culture, mm. but I don't have, there's no white mm. American culture. Boy, do I get pushed back on that one. Mm. Although mm. it isn't anger and it isn't like this because they've never heard that before. So one of the women who I know mm. across the room, we were in a circle and I said, there is no white American culture. And we are jealous of that. Mm. Black people have culture. Mm. Native people have cultures. Mm. All the, you know, the cultures, mm. you just see it, feel it. It runs around, around me. I have no cult. I have no a culture. And she said, mm. yeah, I, I think, I think you're wrong. I said, okay, well, tell me what America, tell, yeah, just it's tell lame. me what, right. what it is. Because it'd be great if if I'm wrong. Shit, I have a culture. That'd be great. She said, well, right. like music. <laughs> right. I said, music. There's white American music. Mm -hmm. And she started talking about symphonies and Bach and Beethoven. Mm. And I said, mm. black mm. people and native people don't like that music? Really? And she said, mm. well, no, I think, I mean, mm. I think it's, I, I think it's, you know, white, it's it's white. And, and maybe some of those some of them like those things. And she's an anti race I know her. I think she's lovely and she's done some good work. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, some of them maybe, like those Maybe things. some of those people yeah. like those things. <laughs> well, we were in a pretty, you know, pretty large group and it wasn't going anywhere. And I wasn't, it wasn't the time we were discussing yeah. a, a film that we'd watched. But I went to a few people afterwards and I said, and well, I told her afterwards, I said, could you make me a list of anything you believe? And I said it lovingly. <laughs> I, I really did. I, I was serving mm -hmm. her food afterwards. And I said, I just want, just mm -hmm. give me a list sometime of all the things that you think are American white culture. And the more and the more I thought about that, I thought, my God, what jealousy. Well, I knew that already, what jealousy. But what's underlying mm -hmm that lack I have to look at it for myself mm -hmm. I go shit and one of my friends said what you want to be black or you want to be naked I said I, I can't be either of those things <laughs> but I mm -hmm. it would be great to have a culture it would be great mm -hmm. to have a real mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. well it's one of the things that I say these days this unapologetic black person that y'all are looking at is taking their culture back because right white on. America has right claimed on. our culture no. and it doesn't belong to you. It's ours. And we're taking no, our and culture we, back. No, and we do that. You know? I, I remember when I was on the street years ago, I started talking like that. Somebody, I don't think mm -hmm. anyone ever said the words to me, mm -hmm. but I certainly got it. Those, oh, really? You were, you know, you start talking mm -hmm. like that just to be part of what, the society and the culture mm -hmm. you're in and working in and dealing with so that people know that I'm here to defend somebody and defend a black person and, and help. And I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I went, Oh no, no, that's just pure privilege. <laughs> you talking shit or going down to the points, which I love. I miss it. I loved it, but I never thought it was mine. I never thought it was mine. Mm. Um, mm. Or if I did, it was a long time ago, and I learned that, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're just being allowed. <laughs> well, I think we've learned a lot here this evening. I, you know, I hope that people will actually listen to this entire episode and take in that, you know, there's no guilt being offered there's just a realization of the seeds that are dropped inside of every human being that we have to grow from, um, that we have to heal, and that we're, we're in a time right now, we're in a pivotal point right now, I really believe, where we're being asked to look at our stuff, all of us, and 
And can we all get along? Because <laughs> you know what? We need each that, other. That's why it's the name of this podcast. That's right. We need each other. And we need your perspective, Wally. We need your perspective. We need your heart. We need your compassion. I'm so glad that I still know you in my life and that we, we will certainly go on will. and on and on. We're thank done. you for being thank, here with us this you, evening. Thank you so this much. I learned discussion. so much. <laughs> and you're not a racist. <laughs> I adore you. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, all right. We will talk soon. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.